Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 and 38. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Let's pray. Lord, we are amazed and thankful, but we stand trembling because nothing in the world goes on more important than, than your work, your ministry, the things that you would have us to do. And so we stand here today to do what you would have us to do. Lord, we need your power. Yes. And we need the forces that are against this to be held back. May we have the ears to hear the truth. May we see ourselves as you see us. Lord, we pray that you would do a great work amongst us today. Let us go forward. Let us not march in place or go backwards. Let us go forward in your will, your way. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Let me examine a little bit of this passage of Scripture before we go to the actual point this morning. It says that Jerusalem killed the prophets. They were against the messengers because they didn't like the message that was sent to them by God. Right. Amen. A prophet are those people that were given a divine message directly from God. Uh, they would be given prophecies concerning the future, and these prophecies would always be true, for they had been revealed to them by the all-knowing, omniscient God. God does see around the corner. God does know tomorrow. God knows everything about everything, even before it happens. The message of the prophets was often a message concerning sin that would be judged so you can understand why they didn't like the message. I don't know of anybody that likes to be told they're wrong. But the message was you have sinned. And because of that, there will be a judgment and unless there is repentance. God tells us these things that we might turn back to Him. He wants that. He wants us to be where we should be with Him. But the truth is, if we reject the message... Judgment's assured. And that's a frightening thing. We do not want to be on the judgment side of God. You say, well, well, I'm saved. I'm not on the judgment side of God. You ought to check out the word chastisement in the Bible. That's for His children. And uh, uh, to use this little you know, country phrase, the woodshed is not pleasant. And when God takes you to the woodshed, it's because you needed to go, because you would not listen. The text verse says that the prophets were killed and stoned by the very ones who God sent them to. Loved them so much to send them of the message that they needed to hear so that they could get right with God to warn them. They didn't want the warning. I read this not long ago. This, this, this is pretty interesting to me. And I, I'm sure you've experienced that. When the, when the weatherman that sometimes is right and sometimes is not tells you that we're going to have a storm, all of a sudden you can't find bread and milk at the store. 
Why? Because people have heard the warning and tried to get prepared for it. How about this? Jesus is coming soon. You getting prepared? Most people, no. The bread and the milk still on the shelf in their life. They're not, they're not listening. Amen. There's a warning being declared, and it's a message that's coming from God. He's told us, but it's like we want to kill the messenger because we don't like the message. And when we do that, we're saying we don't agree with the one who sent it. So if we're not in agreement with God, where are we? If a warning of impending danger does not set well with your way of thinking, then you reject it. Ah, it's no big deal. Not, not for me, you know. In that rejection, you have assured yourself that the judgment will fall upon you. No, oh, not me. We, we think we're exceptional sometimes, don't we? That's, that's not for me. That message was for somebody else. I mean, I've even heard people say this. You know, that was a really good message this morning, preacher. I sure hope such and such heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know? Well, I heard someone describe it this way one time. I thought it was pretty good. Why don't you just draw a circle around you and, and realize that this is for you? Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because it is for you. It is for me. Right. No, no matter where you are, you know, however you want to categorize yourself, the Word of God is for us. Yep. Amen. The warning's for us. The truth is for us. Oh, but I, I really don't need it. I've arrived. Where did you come to that conclusion? Right. The Apostle Paul even said he had not done that. Right. Amen. We haven't arrived. We're not there yet. And so when God sends something to us, we should listen. We should heed. Yeah. Hebrews 2 said we should give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard. Don't just pass them off. Uh, and and just, just logical thinking, if you pass them off, you've rejected it. You're not listening. You know, it's, it's as if we don't care. The truth is, there are consequences for our actions. Amen. Be assured... That it is, that, that, that's a true statement. You or I will not be the first one to set a precedent by avoiding the consequences of rejecting God's message. It's not going to be us. Rejection of God's message will always lead you in the wrong direction. Uh, I appreciated the song, Brother Clint. The message of family, the message of unity, that son rejected. He said, I want, it, I want everything that's coming to me. Isn't that interesting? I wonder how it all came to him to begin with. It was because of his father. Right. Amen. Amen. But he thought it was his. We heard that this morning in Sunday school. And he said, give me, give me all of this. And wh what did he do? He went in the wrong direction. He rejected the message. He went in the wrong direction. And when he was there, oh, I never thought I'd end up here. I never thought, I'd, why not? Why not? Haven't we been listening to the message? Departing from God is the wrong way. Going in that direction will lead to the wrong things. Understand that a rejection of God's message is the acceptance of someone else's message. So I, I, I'd ask the question, who has your ear? Are we listening to God? If not, we are listening to somebody else. If we're not following God, we are following somebody else. If we're not doing it God's way, we're doing it somebody else's way. Amen. It's interesting that Luke 16, 13 says this, No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
In Joshua 24, 15, it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Now maybe you think there is, but there's no third category. Either you're listening to God or you're not. And if you're, if you're not receiving the message from God, you are rejecting the message from God. There's, there's no third category. I'll give you an example. In the book of Acts, Paul is at Mars Hill. He preached to them the unknown God. The response to that, according to Scripture, was some mocked him. Some said, we'll hear you later, and some believed. Now, we might look at that and say, there, there's three categories of response. No, there was only two. The ones who mocked him rejected it. The ones who said later rejected it. Hopefully they'll get it, but they are at the point right then where they've rejected it. I can prove it to you. You hear the gospel. You know you need to be saved. You're pondering that. Okay? Are you saved? What if you died while you're pondering it? You're lost. Only two categories. Only two. When God sends out the message... I would have gathered you, but you would not. That's a rejection. Amen. And it's the, it's the worst possible place to be. In the position of rejecting what God wants to do for us. Amen. The skeptic would say, well, that's just not fair. And God would say, well, I gave you the opportunity. The rejection didn't come from me. The rejection came from you. Sure. Now, let's look at the point. Matthew uh, chapter 23, verse 37. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not? Look very closely in your Bible. I want to draw your attention to something. I, I thought this was very interesting. Notice when it says, ye would not. Do you notice what follows that? An exclamation point. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you, everything that God has said is important. Everything. But if God sees fit to put an exclamation point right there. Good. Look, I, I'm just... This is what I told them up, up in New York country. I said, look, I'm just a southern redneck. Y'all just have to forgive me. All right? But as I look at that, and I think, how stupid. When God puts an emphasis like that as, a, as a, uh, an exclamation point on the end of something, he's saying, and you reject it? I mean, how dumb can you be? Right. But we do it. Right. Yeah. Amen. We reject it. That's what this is about. It was available. And they said, not for me. I don't want that. God's laying all this before them, saying, I, I would draw you under my wings. And we say, no. Where are we headed? Where are we going out if that's not the case? Well, how often would I have tells us that God has a desire to be a blessing to you. He wants to gather us under His wings so He can fellowship with us, so He can provide for us, so He can nourish us, so He can protect us. And we say, I don't want that. We gather under His wing of truth, 
for what He provides there is true, it's right, it's best, it's exactly what we have need of. And what God wants to do for us is such a wonderful thing. But God does not do for us contrary to who He is. Now please get this. God never violates who He is to accommodate us. If He is offering this and He wants to do this and we say no, He allows that. See, he's not going to violate who he is. Amen. Always remember that when we're, dealing, when we're looking at God, and we, we sang about it earlier, when we look at God and realize that he is holy, 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 God will never violate his holiness to do anything. Right. Amen. Now, some would say, oh yeah, but he shows mercy. That's mercy within his holiness. He does not violate his holiness to show us mercy. When he shows us grace, it's because of the great love that he has. But in order, the proof of the fact that he's not going to violate his holiness was he required Jesus to go to Calvary. Because there was no other way for his holiness to be satisfied than with a perfect sacrifice for our sin. And Christ went to Calvary. A holy sacrifice for us. Amen. And now here he is. He's, he's offering this to us. The problem we find in the text is there was a refusal of accepting God's offer of shelter under his wings. Ye would not. That tells me that God can look inside of us and tell exactly what we're thinking about, the way we're figuring it all out. And we're really bad about that, by the way, figuring it all out. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Oh, I know how this ought to be. I know how this ought to be planned. I know how I ought to do this. And I wonder if God just looks at that and shakes his head. Yeah. Huh. Oh, we think we're so smart. I mean, do we have a better plan than being under the wings of the Lord? Well, we think we do. Because if we didn't think we did, we'd get under those wings, wouldn't we? Right. We wouldn't refuse the offer that he's making for us. It's an inter interesting thing that in the text, desolation came upon them because of their refusal to receive the truth. You're desolate. An invitation was given to be gathered under his wings and a choice needed to be made. But when the rejection of the invitation took place, then God, without a vote of majority opinion, said, I'll judge you. I wonder if when we say no to God, we think we're going to get by. Maybe we have a false understanding of who God is when we say that. God is love. Does not the Bible say that? Yeah, it also says He's a consuming fire. It also says He's a God of wrath. He's a God of judgment. He's a God of righteousness. He's a God of holiness. All those things are, are, are in God completely and totally, and, it, and it's all right. But when we reject Him, we're rejecting who He is what he's told us. And when we do that, we're on the wrong side. Amen. Now, I'm not, I'm not just talking about if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you're lost. And if you reject Christ, that's the only hope there is. Right. If you reject that, there's no alternative but that which is bad and horrible. This, this, this passage is not just for lost people. Because after we've been saved, we say no to God. I don't want to go that way. I don't want to do that. Interesting this morning, I, I, is it, I, I'm always amazed how God always ties everything together. And when Clint got up and sang that song and then and listened to Jordan teach Sunday school this morning, and uh, <laughs> we, we just get the idea that we've got this, you know, and, and, I, and I can do it my way. And and God says, no, it just doesn't work that way. Amen. It never works that way. 
I would have gathered you. It would have been so good. It would have been so wonderful. And you just wouldn't do that. Who do we think we are? How smart do we really think we are? To say, I've got a better plan than God's plan. You see, it happens after you get saved too. Simple thing. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Who is that referencing? Who is that written to? It tells me, I think it's written to save people. And so, if you're not faithful, what have you done? You've rejected what he said. Sometimes it's really just that simple. Oh, but this is the way I want to do it. We're, I'm, in, I'm in preparation mode for November. You have to get in preparation mode for the meeting in November in St. Lucia early. And the theme for the meeting down there this year is going to be I will build my church. And it's talking about what Christ had said that he would do. Now, the fact that Christ was going to build his church, he's going to build it upon himself. He's the rock that it's built on. And so we're going to present it that way. But please understand this, that, and I believe this is a fair statement, most churches build on their own ideas their own plans, their own philosophy of doing it. And that's not the way Jesus said the church would be built. We have to line up with God or we're walking contrary to God. In our church ministry, in our individual lives, he said, this is the way it was, it was supposed to be. I want it to be this way, and you would not. You chose not to. There's a great foolishness or insanity to rejecting God's offer of blessing. Does it make any sense to refuse the offer from God for His blessing? And the answer is that, no. Well, then why do we do it? I have, I have, I got, I've got my own way of looking at this thing. You know, I, I want to I do this. You know, pastor said such and such, but I, you know, I don't know. Well, it's interesting that the Bible tells us that the way God has done this, this is his church, and he put the pastor in that position. Amen. Pastor perfect? No. Pastor, pastor? Yes. Amen. I would tell you this, if... if if you didn't have any confidence that your pastor was a man of God, why are you here? Amen. You see, we're not supposed to be adding to his stress. We're supposed to be relieving some of it. <laughs> it's stressful enough when everything's going great because of the responsibility of it. Esteem him highly for his office sake, the work's sake. I mean, there, there's a lot to it. And we need to not say ye would not. It should be more like, well, here am I, what can I do? That it might be carried out. You see, our rejection comes because we don't want to do it God's way. We want the blessing, but we only want the blessing our way. You might think that uh, you might think this. I don't know humorous. I don't know, but I believe it's true. I believe that the most wicked song that's ever been written in the history of mankind was "I Did It My Way." Oh, it's very popular, but how sad! I did it my way. God's not going to do it your way or my way. Right. 
He's not going to violate His holiness. His ways are different. The Bible even says so. My ways, my thoughts, higher than your thoughts, higher than your ways. God's not going to compromise who He is to satisfy our whims. Amen. Yeah, but God, I, I, I think we ought to, I think the church ought to go in this direction. Well, what if that's not the direction God's leading us in? Hey. All of a sudden, God's going to say, oh yeah, that'd be okay. <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes we ought to surrender to the smarter. He's smarter. He knows more. He knows everything. God's not, God's not going to compromise. Our opinions are really unimportant. His blessings will be His way or will not get His blessings. Now, having said that, I, I can, again, I know how people think. Now, wait a minute. You mean... That if I don't line up perfectly with God, that God's not going to bless me with anything. Well, let me just tell you this. God blesses everybody with air every day to breathe. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and on the, on the unjust. I'm talking about God's not going to violate anything when it comes to eternal spiritual things. And that's the truth. Amen. The fact that wicked people are breathing air, that's just God has allowed that to happen. But the idea of us thinking that we can go contrary to God in spiritual matters of eternal value and think they're going to turn out right, they are not. They are not. You, you will never build a church apart from the foundation of Jesus Christ and what He has shown us in His Word. You can say you would not all you want to, but it's not going to work. It has to be done His way. The blessings will always be His way. It's not narrow-minded to be this way on God's part, but it's His holiness manifested. Only the right way will God accept. Holiness cannot compromise truth. And God will not lay aside His holiness to accommodate our opinions about how things should be done. He said, I would have gathered you, but you would not. Huh. Kind of understand why the Bible says it's stubbornness is as <laughs> is witchcraft. Well, we don't mind, we don't have any problem looking at witchcraft and saying, well, that's just terrible. But God said stubbornness is like that. Well, this is the way I want to do it. This is the direction I want to go in. I think it ought to be handled this way. Okay. Well, what did God say? If God said it, doesn't that settle it? Amen. Not if we say, you would not. Yeah, it settles it. It's the truth. But that doesn't mean that's the way we go. That doesn't mean that's what we, the, the, the way we think and, and, and the way we want the direction of our life. We, we say, you know, I no. I'm afraid that too often we think too highly of ourselves. Amen. Jesus said that upon this rock I'll build my church. He also said, I mentioned this up in, in New York. This is a verse in the Bible, by the way, in John chapter 15. And if I make the statement from John 15 and you look at me and you say oh yes I agree with that really John 15 5 Jesus said without me you can do nothing now listen you, you don't have to have an interpreter for that it means exactly what he said Amen. without me you can do nothing I can do nothing oh yeah I can make a mess I can do all that but I can't do anything of eternal spiritual value without Jesus Christ. You cannot do that. Well, what's the exception to the rule? There is none. But do we believe that? You say, sure I do. Then we would practice that all the time.
It's a, it's a frightening thing when we think we've got it. Okay, how long have you been saved? You cannot do it on your own. I heard something this week, thought it was very interesting. Have you noticed, listen, I, I, I pray that this never happens in Emmanuel Baptist Church. But it is something that does happen in a lot of churches across the land. Church has young people. Those young people grow up, because young people do that. And when they get to a, many of them, when they get to a certain age, they leave. Now, why is that? Well, they start listening to their own thinking. And it's very possible that what they were doing while they were young people in the church was because that seemed to be the right thing to do. Which means they looked good, but they really didn't have it inside. Amen. You see, here's something else. God works from the inside out. And if God's not working on your inside out, you've said you would not. You're just going through the motions of all of that. You see, it's got to be real. All of this has got to be real. This is, this is really not just, just Sunday. This is not just the morning service. This is not something to pick and choose over. I mean, this is, I mean, I've heard the say it. This is life and death. It absolutely is. Because when we say we would not, that's a death statement. That's a dying statement. Because there's life under the wings. But there's desolation outside of it. That's what the verse says. Without me, you can do nothing. Emmanuel Baptist Church needs to be built God's way according to God's Word. I mean, that's just not because we're just here. It's because that's the way it's supposed to be, and it needs to be, has to be. Christ for the Caribbean needs to be operated God's way according to God's Word. I mean, one of the very statements that practically everybody involved in that made this statement when we started this thing, we don't know how to do this. Hallelujah. That's a good start. Because if we thought we knew how to do it, it would have already just petered out and got to be gone. No good. But God knows how to do it. And He desires to gather us under His wing and say, look at this. This is the way. You hear that voice from behind you, walk in this way. God's established authoritative rule in the church, and this is His church. And we have no right to tell Him how to operate His church. It's His church. Huh. I wrote this in my notes. And I, I guess I was trying to be cute. I don't know what I was thinking. Let me throw this in, and I promise I'm not going to charge you extra for it. That's what I got written down. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is to have the preeminence. And He's called an under-shepherd pastor to lead the local flock. We should follow the pastor as he follows the Lord. That's God's way. We should not make it harder on the pastor, but easier. Right now, y'all shake your head down like this. Don't you lie, though. You mean that. When you mean that, you'll do something with it. You'll get up under the wings. You'll get where the fellowship with God is. You'll get where the instruction with God is where the provision is. You'll get up under that, and if you say you would not, there's desolation on the outside of that. Amen. I've heard it too many times where this thriving church, I mean, it's not that it just no longer thrives. It no longer exists. Right, right. What happened? They would not. They would not. They chose to
take it in the direction they wanted to take it in. And that's the ways of destruction, of desolation, the Bible says. God's given us the instruction manual. He's given us the blueprints to build. He's equipped us with the necessary tools. It is His desire to take us under His wing and provide everything we need to go forward to His glory. You have to receive the message to get under the wings. You reject it, you're going to be outside looking in. Not only that, you will be a hindrance to the ones that are inside trying to do it. I've thought about this often. A lot of times, uh, spectators. You say, spectators are not bothering anybody. Oh, yeah, they are. First of all, they should be doing something that they're not. So they're making it harder on the ones that are. But second of all, a lot of times what spectators will do, they'll watch the runners go by and they'll stick their leg out every once in a while and try to trip them. They've rejected the message. Rejected the message. I heard it described this way that the, the ministry is a lot like a football game. There's 22 men down on the field desperately in need of rest being watched by 40,000 people desperately in need of exercise. <laughs> we need the exercise. We need the spiritual exercise. Amen. We need to say yes instead of we would not. We need to say what would you have me to do rather than that's probably for somebody else. Right. Right. We need to go forward for the glory of God. How sad it would be if it could be said about us that we would not. The Bible says, let us consider our ways. <clears throat> Let's look in the mirror this morning. To find out where we are. Is there a shadow over our mirror? The wings of God. And we're conducting our lives accordingly. Or when we look in the mirror... Do we see our ways and our opinions? And, you, know. you say, well, I, I really don't want to look in the mirror. God wants you to look in the mirror. He wants you to see what you really are. I mentioned, I told you I got an opportunity. I had, I had to study and study and study while I was up there. And the Lord showed me something about this. And, and what my favorite, probably my most practical favorite passage of Scripture is Proverbs chapter 3. Which says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. And I gave them a definition of what it means to acknowledge Him. You recognize God for who He is and you recognize who for who you're not. Amen. And if He'll recognize you for who you're not, you won't try to take control. Amen. He's in control. Yes. He's God. Yeah. Acknowledge Him in everything you do. Under those wings, he'll guide you, he'll provide for you, he'll lead you, he'll take care of you. Amen. You try to get outside of them, those wings, you're in trouble. When we try to do it ourselves, we're in trouble. Let's stand this morning if we would, please. <clears throat> Everything about the instruction from God is important. Everything about the Word of God is important. Everything about what God wants us to do is important. And if it doesn't take precedent, we're rejecting it. Because there is nothing more important than what God wants. Nothing. Someone got in an, almost an, an I don't, I don't argue, but somebody got, almost got in an argument with me about this. You know, you've heard the saying that we're not, uh, uh, some people say you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. They believe that. Oh, that, that's, you're too much of a fanatic. You, you, you're just over the top. 
you, you know, we, we've got we've to have a, a good mixture right here. Well, I know it's a mixture. We have to live in this world. But who's supposed to be on the top of that list? Right. Who's supposed to take precedent? The Bible calls it preeminence in the book of Colossians. Who has preeminence? That's Christ. And if he doesn't have Christ, uh, the preeminence in our life, we're rejecting him as Lord. We're rejecting his message. And sometimes we get mad at the messenger. That used to bother me. It doesn't bother me anymore. It just doesn't. If you get mad at me, well, I had somebody tell me one time, they said, you know what? Some of the things you don't preach, I don't like. Some of the things you preach, I don't like. I said, what part of the Bible you disagree with? Right. Hey. That's the only thing I know to preach. It's the only thing I know to tell. So what part of that don't you agree with? You're rejecting hey. what thus saith the Lord. Good. Examine yourself. Hey. Where are you? Is he everything to you? Is he your all in all? Or do you have some ye would nots in your life? Let's just be honest. That's the only way we'll ever deal with something if we're honest. Lord, would you help us this morning? Would we see that so often we're guilty of our own plans and our own opinions and our own ways and instead of listening to you? Well, I'm afraid we've gotten at a distance and now we don't hear a still small voice anymore. Lord, your desire was to gather and because we would not we were scattered. Lord, help us to draw near this morning. If we'll draw nigh, you said you'd draw nigh to us. May we look in the mirror. See who we are and where we are. See if there's any wicked way in me, Lord. And may we say, yes, Lord. Here I am. Use me. Guide me. Fill me. That I might walk in your ways. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.